The former Cherry Creek High School softball coach told a 16 year old girl that he was only trying to help when he asked her to send nude pictures online. That was one of the details we learned today from the arrest warrant in this case. Two weeks after that online exchange, the girl took her own life. Here's Nine News crime and justice reporter Matt Jablo. 37 year old Paul Severson has spent the last few years coaching and working with teenagers in Colorado, teenage girls specifically. He's now charged with posing online as a life coach or trainer to get nude pictures from a 16 year old. An arrest warrant says Severson connected with a 16 year old girl in Virginia using the online sites Omegle and Kick. The warrant says he asked the girl to send pictures or videos so he can, quote, see what I'm working with. In response, the girl sent pictures of herself without a shirt on, but covering herself with her hands. At one point, according to the warrant, Severson, who claimed he was 22 years old, told the girl, quote, I would date you. You need to have confidence. Less than a month later, the girl took her own life. Police have not drawn a direct connection between the online exchange and the girl's death. This is an utter tragedy. But Nine News child psychologist Cheryl Ziegler says she would not be surprised if the online exchange was a tipping point for the 16 year old. It is really another tragic wake up call to us all that we need to be engaged with our kids. We need to know what they're doing on their phones. We can't have the online safety conversation enough. In addition to being the girls softball coach at Cherry Creek High School until his arrest, Severson also coached the Colorado Sticks Girls Softball Club. He's also been fired from that job now. Arapaho Sheriff's deputies say they're concerned he might have had other victims, and they're asking anyone with information about other possible cases to contact them immediately. Wow, well, there's a lot to be concerned about here. Thank you, Matt. President Joe Biden has tested positive for COVID-19. The White House says his symptoms are mild. The president tweeted this photo of himself working at his desk shortly after that announcement was made. He said he's, quote, doing great. He's currently isolating at the White House. Now, the president is 79 years old. He is fully vaccinated and double boosted. White House COVID response coordinator Dr. Ashish Jha says that that level of protection is the main reason why the president's symptoms are mild. Because the president is fully vaccinated, double boosted, his risk of serious illness is dramatically lower. He's also getting treated with a very powerful antiviral, and that further reduces his risk of serious illness. Now, of course, you you will remember that former President Trump also tested positive for COVID-19 during his time in office. That was extensively covered back then. It was in 2020, and it was before we had vaccinations available for the public, and the treatment options publicly available were different from today to then. Coming up in a few minutes, we will talk with Nine News health expert Dr. Pyle Coley about the advancements in treatment for COVID-19 and what's different now for President Biden. Take a live look out over some beautiful part of the mountains today. I'm not exactly sure what we're looking at, but yeah. it is a hot day today. It has been hot it's all week. It's a little week. hazy out there. It's a little bit hazy out there. Yeah, Lauren, I know it's been a busy week. We've been tracking, you know, morning heat, afternoon isolated storms and stuff. So what are we looking at for today? Same thing you just mentioned. Morning heat, afternoon uh, isolated storms. Uh, today we did make it to 97 degrees so far. Let's go ahead and take another live look over downtown Denver, where you can see that cloud cover really starting to build in, and that's saving us from getting any hotter. So now the temperature is down to around 93 degrees. We have winds coming in from the northwest at around 15 miles per hour, a slight breeze. But as you take a look at the rest of the temperatures across the front range in eastern plains, mostly in the lower to mid 90s, you can still see some triple digits further northeast, 100 still in Sterling. Even out west, we're seeing triple digits in Grand Junction, 70s and 80s currently in the high country. So those very spotty storms mostly sticking to the high country and foothills areas. As we zoom into the Denver, you can see most of us staying dry, but some foot Hills area seeing a few raindrops and a couple of raindrops making their way a little bit further eastward before they just die out altogether. The same thing happening further south where we're going to see most of those storms very spotty but moving out of Colorado. So nothing severe or too widespread is expected as we go through the rest of the afternoon and evening. We did see those highs near 97 degrees earlier today. Overnight as everything clears on out, we'll see those lows near 67 degrees and tomorrow even hotter still. We'll get plenty of sunshine, temperatures near 90 in Denver. A lot of the state could even see those triple digit highs tomorrow. So I'll have details on everything we're expecting just ahead of my full seven day forecast. Mm -hmm.
Tonight marks the last January 6th hearing of the month. Committee aides say the panel will show how Trump, quote, refused to act to defend the Capitol. The committee will focus a period of time spanning 187 minutes on that day. That's starting when Trump told his supporters to start marching onto the Capitol during a speech on the ellipse and ending when he released a video telling rioters to leave the Capitol. The hearing airs at 6 tonight right here on 9 News. Because of that, there is no next with Kyle Clark this evening. Ahead of tonight's hearing, researchers at Harvard University released findings from the latest study yet on the motivations of the January 6th rioters. Using charging documents and sentencing memoranda, they determined that the most common motivators among rioters were support for Trump and the belief the election was rigged. The study involved more than 400 cases and thousands of court documents. Steve Bannon's lawyers began their defense today. The former Trump advisor is on trial, accused of contempt of Congress. As the former Trump advisor's trial enters a new phase, we know defense lawyers have argued that the government has not proved Bannon's guilt. Bannon was charged after ignoring a subpoena from the January 6th committee to testify. Prosecutors said Bannon, quote, decided he was above the law. The defense said they will not call any witnesses or present a case. The judge said he will hold off on the ruling for the motion for acquittal. New York Senator Chuck Schumer, a Democrat, is introducing his bill to decriminalize marijuana on a national level. It's called the Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act. If it's passed, it would decriminalize marijuana nationally and leave it up to the states to set up their own laws without federal interference. The senator has made decriminalization a priority for the last two years, saying it's time for things to change. It is time to end the federal prohibition on cannabis. And this bill provides the best framework for updating our cannabis laws and reversing decades of harm inflicted by the war on drugs. National polls have shown roughly two-thirds of Americans back marijuana legalization. Despite public support, it's unclear if the bill can pass through the divided Senate. A former Minneapolis police officer will spend more than two years in prison for violating George Floyd's civil rights on the day he was killed by police. A federal judge sentenced Thomas Lane to 30 months in prison. Lane is one of three officers convicted of violating Floyd's civil rights for not giving him medical care. During Lane's trial, he testified he didn't realize how dire Floyd's condition was until paramedics arrived and turned Floyd over. Members of George Floyd's family were not happy with that 30 month sentence. I just don't understand how can you just give somebody the minimum amount of time that you want to give them and you've seen on the video that he did not try to reposition my brother. He did not try to minister CPR to my brother. They basically, all of them together, just stood there and gave my brother no option but to die. No option but for the world to see a video of a man being murdered in broad daylight. Lane faces another sentencing coming up in September that will be in state court in a case where he pleaded guilty to aiding and abetting manslaughter. President Biden says he's doing well after testing positive for COVID today. It's a sign of how far treatment and prevention for COVID has come since the pandemic started. And coming up, we'll talk with our Nine News health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, about those treatments and how the BA.5 subvariant continues to infect thousands of people.